This is a brand new Mauville 11 inch French carbon steel skillet. Today we're going to clean the beeswax off of it, season it, cook some delicious food, hopefully, and then we're going to ask ourselves, is this one worth your hard earned money? I don't know. Let's find out. Hi and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. And here it is, the Mobile 11 inch carbon steel skillet. My first reaction is it feels sturdy but not terribly heavy. It feels like a medium weight pan. It's French, made in France. Every time I buy a Mobile pan, they come packed with one of these little inspected by cards. And the last one I got was inspected by Carol. Okay, Carol's okay. This one, however, Napoleon. Inspected by Napoleon. It doesn't get much more French than that. Now what can you expect with a new French carbon steel skillet? The first thing you notice when you unpack it is that it comes with a coating of beeswax. Let's take a closer look. Here you can really see the beeswax on the rivets and the handle. We'll need to remove all that beeswax before we start seasoning and cooking here in a few minutes. You know, last year I reviewed another Moviel M-Steel pan in the same lineup, a 14-incher. It's just so darn big that I often don't have a good reason to use it. But generally, I just cook for one or two people, my wife and myself. So I wanted to try a more reasonably sized pan that I could use more often and see how it compares to my Debyers and Matfers. And speaking of comparisons, right off the bat, the weight of the 11-inch Moviel is where the greatest differences lie between it and the other carbon steels. Or is it lay? Regardless, for example, the Debyer Pro weighs in at over 6 pounds. It's very heavy, it's 3 millimeters thick. It's almost the same weight as a cast iron skillet. Now this new Moviel, it weighs in at just a skosh over 3 pounds, so almost 50% lighter. And of course, this M-Steel is still a carbon steel pan. It's only relatively light. To keep things in perspective, it's still 50% heavier than my wife's larger traditional non-stick skillet. If we take a one and a quarter pound iron weight and use it as a representation of a pack of ground beef or perhaps one of my wife's attempts at homemade biscuits, the Moviel is very maneuverable even when weighted down. In contrast, the Debyer Pro, when weighted down with food, is much too heavy for food flipping and really needs its helper handle. The downside to being a little lighter and thinner is that the pan might retain a little less heat when doing things like a high temp sear of a steak, for example. And I think it might be a little more prone to warping issues if you use it on an induction or electric flat top stove. Now on a gas stove top, you're good to go, but on flat tops, this pan will be a little bit harder to season and keep flat and you'll need to take extra care to heat it as slowly as possible. Now speaking of flatness, this Moviel arrived nice and flat, no wobble, it has a good balance to it. The handle seems appropriately thick and sturdy. The handle is wide and flattish with a nice rounded thumb groove in the middle to help with the grip and it's attached securely with rivets. It has a nice balance and feel to it. Nice angle and height. Now I love these carbon steel skillets. I've done a lot of videos and reviews on them, but some people write to me and say that they're having problems with them. It turns out that most of the people that report having problems are either using an electric flat top or an induction stove. So to help those people out, what we're going to do today is something kind of unique. I am not going to use my fancy Ilve gas stove. What we're going to do is use an induction burner and an electric flat top stove to do all the seasoning and cooking and see how that goes. Now, if it's just not working correctly, we can always switch back to the gas if we need to. So how's it going to go? Honestly, I don't know. Let's get started. Now to season the pan, the first thing we need to do is use heat to melt and remove the beeswax coating. Now thinking I had come up with a novel method, I went through my wife's drawers, so to speak, and got her hair dryer and tried to melt it off that way. And that was a big fail in many more ways than one. Now you can melt the beeswax off in your oven over a paper towel lined cookie sheet. But what I normally do and seems to work pretty well is to take the pan out in the yard and pour a couple of kettles of boiling water over it. Now just don't do that in your sink, else that melted wax will harden in your plumbing and cause all kinds of problems. 
So I melted and removed that beeswax, gave it a good wash, and now we're ready to give the pan its initial seasoning. Now I'll be using the Matford method to give this Moviel its initial seasoning, which is more than the directions say is required, but I like to do a little bit extra with a brand new pan. Now this involves sauteing the peels of a couple of potatoes and a third of a cup of oil and two thirds of a cup of salt for 10 to 15 minutes, then repeating. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna use induction and electric cooktop, and here's where the problem started. Despite my best intentions, the seasoning turned out to be a ginormous mess. On the induction, I got a weird ring of bad seasoning in the middle of the pan, only where the pan sat over the coil. It didn't go out to the edges or up the sides. I moved to my basement and did a second round of seasoning on an electric flat top. And while it was a little bit better when I put the pan on a wider burner, it still left the sides unseasoned. So as much as I hate to say it, I am abandoning the electric and the induction. I am moving back to the gas stove to do the rest of the tests. Now normally for these carbon steel skillets, I urge people to season correctly one time and then just start cooking. But because this was such a mess on the two flat tops, I gave this Moviel a bonus seasoning on the gas stove and got the sides nicely colored in. Now for the cooking tests. I went for a high temp sear test with a couple of big, nice, thick, juicy steaks. And on a side note here, I never have quite figured out which part of the cow the juice comes from. Anyway, I got the pan smoking hot, in go the steaks, and they started to brown nicely. At the same time, I cooked some more potatoes in both my DeBayer and Matford carbon steels, and I kind of like seeing the three carbon steels all working together and flying in formation. The Moviel produced nice browning on the steaks. I gave them a couple of minutes on each side, a little time in the oven. Then I finished them back on the stovetop with some butter and fresh rosemary. Very, very delicious. Now a couple of additional notes here. This 11 inch pan is about the smallest size I would use for searing two steaks. And there isn't much crowding, but any smaller in the pan would be too small. And clean up. Searing meat always leaves some sticky bits on the pan. I simply deglazed the hot pan with hot water and never used cold water in a hot pan and everything scraped right out. Then I cleaned with paper towels and hot water in the sink. No big deal. Edges of new pans can be sharp. Be careful. I've had the same thing happen with all clad. And here you can see some nice color and seasoning developing. Pro tip, searing red meat is a good way to get some color on your new carbon steel pans. Next I tried my first omelet. and although I could get it to move and flip, I got just a little bit of sticking, which worried me a little. And with a little bit of sticking with the omelet, I still wasn't totally happy with the seasoning, so I did another little maintenance seasoning, this time putting it on a smaller burner and really focusing on the cooking surface and not the sides and edges of the pan. Darkened it in a little bit more. Next up, I cooked some fried okra. Simple recipe with raw cut okra rolled in some cornmeal with salt and pepper. No batter needed, and I got no sticking. The okra slid when I shook the pan. It browned up nicely, and as a former southerner who has eaten tons of my mom's and grandmother's fried okra, I can give this an official thumbs up. Next up were a couple of Beyond Meat meatless meat patties. They produce no sticking. They browned up nicely, and I think I'll just leave these for my wife to eat. I cooked some light life, gimme lean, plant-based ground sausage. And you know, this stuff looks absolutely delicious. Not. Now I would say I was gonna brown this, but it's already brown. And you know, just looking at it, I'm afraid there may be a similar brown log in my near future. But here we go cooking it anyway. Side note, I'm also reviewing another Moviel pan an M Heritage stainless line copper for another video. Keep an eye out for that. So here's a little bonus Moviel coverage. The pretend sausage patties browned evenly and showed that the pan has no major hot spots. I also note that the patties released with a light touch of the spatula, whereas they stuck a little and needed noticeably more effort to release in the fancier and more expensive Moviel copper. So side by side, good old carbon steel is fantastic for browning versus the fancier pan.
And honestly, to me, these things are absolutely terrible. Now, I also cook some Beyond Meat pretend Italian sausage. And interestingly, of the three pretend meats I tried in this pan, these were the only ones to really stick, and they emitted something yellow. But at the same time, they were also the tastiest of the bunch. I actually ate them, which is about the highest praise they will get out of me. Okay, now back to real meat. Next, I browned a pack of ground beef. This 11 inch pan is a good size for your standard supermarket pack of ground beef for taco night. The Moviel browned the beef nicely. Also browned some onions after that and they turned out pretty nicely as well. And we also cooked up some zucchini and they had no sticking and turned out pretty flavorful and nice. Now back to the eggs. I've kept cooking omelets in this pan for a couple of weeks now and I'm liking the Moviel more and more. Now I've found that cooking eggs and omelets is a great way to learn a new pan. You'll learn how your pan heats up, how it responds to changes in temperature, how its seasoning is performing, and on and on. Here a French turned out pretty decently. My folding always needs some work. Here a Western turned out pretty nicely too. The eggs slid around and they're easy to flip. Next up was the proverbial fried egg test. I heated the pan, put in the butter, put in the egg, waited a bit, and Grazie Buon Dio, it slid the first time, and the Moviel passes the fried egg test. So the cooking surface on the Moviel works great. It's taking on its seasoning well, and its non-stickability with eggs, along with its browning ability, is in the same range as my Matfer and DeBayer pans. All right, this Moviel, at first, I didn't think I was going to like this pan, just because of the weight. I thought it was a little bit too lightweight for me. But the more I use it, the more I really like it. I find myself wanting to cook more and more in the pan. Now, I've been using it for a little over a month. I've cooked a lot of eggs. We cooked a bunch of other stuff you saw in the video. Most everything has turned out really nicely. Only a few things stuck, things like those Beyond Meat, fake Italian sausages, those kind of stuck a little bit. Okay, whatever. But I've got the seasoning coming in. The seasoning is looking really nice. It's darkened in. My eggs don't stick. And I'm really impressed with the maneuverability of this pan. I didn't really think I was going to enjoy that so much. I wanted a heavier pan. But the more I use it, the more I like the lighter weight pan. So after using it for a month, after cooking a lot in it, I'm going to give this pan a thumbs up. I really like it. However, this pan is not for everyone. Who is going to like this pan? Those people who want a lighter weight pan, people who tend to move a pan around a lot while cooking food. If you want to do a French omelet where you shake a pan, where you flip eggs, if you flip a stir fry, for example, people who need a lighter weight, more maneuverable pan will really like this pan. On the downside, the people who are not going to like this pan are probably those who have induction or electric flat top stove tops. Now, on the upside, the lighter weight makes it a little bit more maneuverable. On the downside, I think that might make the pan a little bit more prone to warping, maybe having some problems on those flat top stoves. So if you have one of those stoves, I think you might have a little bit safer choice in a DeBayer Pro, a little bit thicker, heavier skillet. Um, if you have a gas stove top, however, you can choose your carbon steel skillet based on the weight of pan you like. The world is really your oyster if you cook on gas stove top. So you can, if you want a heavier pan to buy a pro, medium heavy, a mat for a little bit lighter, more maneuverable, this Moviel 11 inch I think is a great pan to go with. So overall I give the Moviel pan a thumbs up. Be careful though if you have electric or induction flat top stoves. Now if you found this review helpful I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've launched a Twitter and a Facebook page. Those are just now getting up and going. So if you check those out, that would be awesome. If you leave feedback, I do my best to respond to all that, questions or comments below the video. I try to respond to all those. And what else? We got affiliate shopping links if you want one of these for yourself. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Scott's Kitchen.